looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd to get a 10 percent discount on orders over ten dollars and starting from now you also get entered into the gills of ravnica booster box giveaway which runs until october 5th hello and welcome to another episode of spike sunday a weekly series where we take a look at established standards for modern decks and this week we're taking a look at the bridge vine in modern a black red splash green graveyard deck that's built around the two namesake cards venge vine and a bridge from below the two payoff cards for the deck so let's first take a look at venge vine a four mana four three with haste but we're not actually planning on casting our venge vine instead whenever we cast a spell if it's the second creature spell we've cast this turn we can return venge vine from the graveyard to the battlefield so the goal of the deck is to get venge vine and bridge from below in the graveyard and then get value and in the case of venge vine just casting a few cheap creatures will get it back from the graveyard and then in the case of bridge from below a triple black enchantment that we're also not planning on casting instead whenever a non-token creature is put into our graveyard from the battlefield if bridge from below is in our graveyard we get to make a 2-2 black a zombie creature token and with all the different sacrifice outlets in the deck we can make sure to put a ton of creatures in our graveyard and generate a lot of 2-2 zombie tokens there is a way for the opponent to get rid of our bridge from below from our graveyard since when a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from a battlefield if bridge from below is in our graveyard we have to exile it so we need to make sure to get enough value out of our bridges before we start trading off creatures so let's take a look at the rest of the deck here, starting out with some of our 1-drops, and the deck is mostly 1-drops and 0-drops. We have 4 copies of Gravecrawler, a 1-mana 2-1 zombie, and Gravecrawler can't block, but we can cast Gravecrawler from our graveyard as long as we control a zombie, and of course with the tokens from Bridge from Below being zombies, that's an easy way for us to get a zombie in play to get back Gravecrawlers, and if you combine Gravecrawler with a Sacrifice Outlet like Viscera Seer or Greater Gargadon, as we'll see in a second, and if we have a bridge from below in our graveyard, then we can start generating a ton of zombies. Then we have four copies of Stitcher Supplier from M19, which enabled the deck as a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one zombie, so that's relevant for Gravecrawler. And when the Supplier enters the battlefield or dies, we get to put the top three cards of our library into our graveyard, so great at filling our graveyard to find those Venge Vines and Bridges. Then we have three copies of Viscera Seer as our first sacrifice outlet. One mana for a 1-1 one -one vampire, we can sacrifice a creature to scry one. So this enables us to generate a ton of zombie tokens if we have a bridge from below in our graveyard, especially combined with Gravecrawler. Then we have four copies of Faithless Looting, which is one of the more important cards in the deck, letting us draw two and then discard two. So helps us put those copies of Vengevine and bridge from below from our hand into our graveyard, and also has a flashback for two and a red. Then we have three copies of Goblin Bushwhacker, which helps us close out the game as a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one with Kicker for a single red. And when Goblin Bushwhacker enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, then creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain haste until end of turn. So it combines very nicely with a ton of zombies from Bridge from Blow. And there's even a neat little trick we can do if we kick a Bushwhacker. With the trigger on the stack, we can sacrifice Bushwhacker to a Viscera Seer or Greater Gargadon get a bunch of zombies based on how many bridges we have in our graveyard, and then all of those zombies will still get the plus one plus one and haste until end of turn if we make sure to get those zombies before the kicker trigger resolves from the bushwhacker. Then we have four copies of Insulon Neonate, which is another way for us to get cards from our hand into our graveyard, and it's also a creature for us to enable Vengevine. So it's a one mana, one one vampire with menace, and we can discard a card and sacrifice a Neonate to draw a card. And an important interaction between Neonate and Bridge from Below is that if we discard a Bridge from Below with the Neonate's ability and sacrifice a Neonate, we will get a 2-2 zombie because the bridge will be in the graveyard by the time the Neonate is sacrificed. Then we also have three copies of Bloodcast as another nice value creature to get back from our graveyard. So double black for a 2-1 that can block. Bloodcast has haste as long as an opponent has 10 or less life. And with a landfall we get to return the Bloodcast from our graveyard to the battlefield. So it just takes playing a land for us to get back the Bloodcast, which is another nice grindy creature to keep getting back and sacrificing to our various sacrifice outlets to keep making more zombie tokens. Then we've already covered Bridge from Below and Vengevine. I've mentioned Greater Gargadon a few times as a sacrifice outlet. So Greater Gargadon is a card we want to suspend for one red mana, so it gets 10 time counters on it, and every upkeep we get to remove a time counter from the Greater Gargadon, and if the last one is removed we get to cast a Gargadon, and it enters the battlefield with haste as a 9-7. And we can speed up this process by sacrificing an artifact, creature or land, because then we get to remove a time counter from Greater Gargadon. So the advantage over Viscerus here of course is that it's a sacrifice outlet that the opponent can't easily interact with and eventually we will get a 9-7 with haste which can also help us close out the game and when we do get the greater gargadon back from suspend it does count as a creature being cast so it also helps with vengevine 
And last but not least, we have a bunch of these double axe casting cost artifact creatures in our deck, like Hangerback Walker and Walking Ballista, which are quite important and synergistic in our deck, since if we cast them for a total of 0 mana, then we still get to trigger Vengevine, and we still get a zombie token from Bridge from Below, so that allows for these very explosive turns where we can just make a bunch of zombie tokens, and of course we can still cast them for more mana if the game drags out a little bit. And then Hangerback Walker also synergistic with our different sacrifice outlets, since if the Hangerback Walker dies, we get a bunch of Thopter tokens, giving us more food for Viscera Seer and Greater Gargadon, and potentially making more zombie tokens. And then Walking Ballista can also act as a removal spell, dealing damage to creatures or opponents. Then our mana base is pretty straightforward. We have a total of 8 fetch lands, 4 Verdants, and 4 Bloodstay Mars, which can get 2 copies of Blood Crypt, 1 Overgrown Tomb. One Stomping Ground and the green manas mainly for sideboard cards, but they also enable us to potentially hard cast Venge Vines. We also have one of each basic, one Mountain and one Swamp, and then four Blackleaf Cliffs, which Anders Belfield untapped if it's one of our first three lands. And then going over the sideboard, we have one copy of Dark Blast if we need to get rid of one Toughness Creatures, two Ingot Chewers as Artifact Hate, so we can evoke these for one red mana, and then when we enter the battlefield, we can destroy an artifact. So they're also quite synergistic with the Bridge from Below, and we can even sacrifice them in response with the Viscera Seer to still get our Scry before they go to the graveyard. We also have three copies of Thoughtseize against combo and control decks, two Lightning Axe, which also helps us discard cards from our hand and acts as a removal spell. Then we have three Ravaries to deal with artifacts and enchantments, and four copies of Leyline of the Void to deal with other graveyard decks. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand seems great. We've got Vengevine and Bridge, we've got ways to discard them, cheap creatures to enable Vengevine, so this could be a potentially very explosive draw. And a turn 1 Inquisition can take away the looting or the neonate, but uh, we're still left with the other one. Of course, losing the looting is unfortunate, since then we can both get Vengevine and Bridge in our graveyard. Instead, our opponent decides to go with the Walking Ballista, that's kind of strange. They maybe wanted to prevent us from casting two creatures in the same turn. But I think we'll lead with looting here. And then get our Vengevine and Bridge in the graveyard. And then next turn we can potentially get back Vengevine. Ancient Stirrings, alright. Opponent with maybe a Lantern deck, who knows. That would explain the Walking Ballista discard, since that's a way for us to deal damage through an Ensnaring Bridge picked up another looting. So let's see, how do we want to sequence things? So we can play a unate, sacrifice it, discarding Bloodcast, play the land, get back Bloodcast, play Viscera Seer, that seems like a good place to start. Could also discard the Gravecrawler instead of the Bloodcast, but I think getting back Bloodcast this turn is probably better. So let's start with Neonate, sacrifice, Discarding Bloodcast, get a zombie from Bridge from Blow, and even found a Hangerback Walker, so we can play that for zero to get another zombie, get back Vengevine, although we will get back Vengevine no matter what here. It lets us play another looting first, which might find more copies of uh, Bridge from Blow or more copies of Vengevine, so I guess that's worth doing here. So we'll get a Blood Crypt. Looting first, and instead find Bushwhacker and Gargadon. We're definitely discarding Gravecrawler, but then the question is, do we discard Gargadon or Viscera Seer here? I think we discard Gargadon. And then we still get to play Hanger back for zero. Trigger Vengevine, make a zombie, and we get to start attacking for four. And then next turn, this Bushwhacker is going to be pretty exciting too. And now, of course, we have the zombie tokens in play, so Gravecrawler is good to go. And Gravecrawler plus Viscera Seer is a pretty potent combo. And there's a Matter Reshaper, so maybe a opponent with an Eldrazi variant. So we don't have to trade with the Matter Reshaper quite yet, since we can get more value out of our bridge first. Can play Viscera Seer. We can sacrifice our Bloodcasts. 
make a zombie scry. And do we want a Venge Vine on top? I don't think so, but it probably doesn't matter since we're playing a land this turn anyway. So this triggers Bloodgas. Guess we get to sacrifice him again. Make another zombie. And I guess we can actually try and go for a lethal attack this turn. Get a mountain. Get blood gas back. And then we can play kick bushwhacker. And with the ability we can sacrifice bushwhacker. Scry. Bottom. We can sacrifice blood gas once again. And sacrifice Visras here, and then we would have had more than enough here to attack for lethal, since all our zombies would have gotten plus one plus one haste. Alright, so that was a pretty quick win there. Even their opponent disrupted our hand with Inquisition was not nearly enough. Alright, so against the Black Green Eldrazi type deck, opponent could be bringing in their own copies of Leyline of the Void, they could have Surgical Extractions. I suppose they could also have Graveyard Hate in Artifact form, given the Ancient Stirrings. So maybe bringing in a few copies of Ingot Shewer is not a bad idea. I think we'll try the Ingot Shewer instead of the Ravelries before we see any enchantments. And what do we take out? I could see cutting uh, some blood gas in this matchup. And yeah, we'll, we'll try this. Alright, this hand seems fine. We've got Neonate plus Bridge and then Visra here as a sacrifice outlet. So opponent does not have a Leyline of the Void on turn zero. That's good instead of turn 1 Relic, but uh, Relic is sometimes just too slow against us since we can already get value out of our uh, bridge with our Neonate here before the opponent gets to interact, and of course the Fetch Lands also help against Relic. So I don't mind discarding a bridge right away here and kind of forcing the action, opponent's gonna use Relic now, so let's get our Blood Crypt. And then play Neonate. And then just make a zombie right away. And find another Visceras here. Alright. So your opponent could sacrifice a relic here to get rid of the bridge. Or they could hold on to it. So we'll get rid of our Neonate. And our opponent passes a turn without playing a land. So our opponent kept somewhat of a sketchy hand because they had the Graveyard Hate which is something you'll often run into. So let's start by playing another Neonate. And our opponent's just gonna pop the Relic right now. So Bridge is gone. And now we just have to go on the beatdown plan with these questionable creatures here. Uh, could also get a green source here in case we top deck Venge Vines. That might not be a bad idea. Let's get an Overgrown Tomb. Play Visras here, attack for two, and then hope the opponent misses a few more land drops. And yeah, opponent just has to ship it back. Discards to hand size, gets rid of a Thought Knot Seer. And we're just gonna attack for four, and play another Visras here. Our opponent does find a second land for an Overgrown Tomb and Ancient Stirrings, which is going to help them find a third land. Finds a Ghost Quarter. Alright, so finding a Bushwhacker here would be pretty exciting. Let's get our Stomping Ground. And I think we just take a draw step. Ingature instead. Well, next turn we can maybe hardcast it. So we'll play a Blackleaf Cliffs for now and say go. We could also evoke it and then sack it to the Visras here to improve our draw. I think we're better off keeping the Ingachua around. You never know what artifacts our opponent shows up with. And it's gonna be a Matter Reshaper as the first roadblock. And a Faithless Looting, not a bad one. So if we go for the Looting, we will no longer be able to Ingachua, but we could draw into something exciting here, so I think it's worth it. And there we go, Vengevine and Neonate. So let's discard Vengevine and a land. And evoking Ingachure does not count as casting a creature for Vengevine, so we'll have to keep that in mind. 
but I think it's worth trying with the neonate here and potentially draw into something. So we'll sag the neonate to itself, discarding Bloodstained Mare, and pick up another Vengevine. Alright, so we wouldn't be able to get the Vengevine back this turn, or we could just hardcast the Vengevine next turn, that's also possible. I suppose we could have also just kept the land and then hardcast Vengevine this turn, maybe that would have worked out better. So our opponent trades Matter Reshaper for a zombie token, I think that's fine, we could sag the zombie in response to get a scry, don't think that's worth it here. Our opponent reveals Conduit of Ruin. So we had a lot of options here, we went for the kind of greediest play, which was sacrificing Neonate, hoping to find another cheap creature we could cast, did not work out. Maelstrom Pulse on Vistras here, need to make sure to sack it in response here, so the other one doesn't die. And another looting, I guess that's an okay draw, although I guess just hard casting a Vengevine wins us the game, but we'll keep it on top anyway. So your opponent says go, and yeah, just hard cast Vengevine's gonna do it here. No need to get fancy, and that's why the two green sources can be useful in the deck. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And, I mean, this hand could be anything based on what we hit with the suppliers. And having a looting is always nice, so I think we'll keep. But there's a chance we hit blanks and don't really get anywhere. So we're hoping to find Venge Vines mostly with this hand, I think. We could also looting first to keep more creatures in hand on turn 2 to trigger Venge Vine. But we do have Hangerback Walker to trigger it alongside a 1-drop, so I think we're fine playing a Supplier first. The other option would be casting a Gravecrawler, but if we can spike a Vengevine, that's gonna work out better. Alright, find Gargadon and Neonate. And then next turn we can maybe go Gravecrawler plus Supplier. And we're up against the Tron deck, alright, so it's all about being as fast as possible here. Another Blackleaf Cliffs to draw. So, my guess is we lead with Supplier. Find Ballista and two lands, so not what we were hoping for. And now we might as well play the Gravecrawler. So, pretty tame start here, sadly. So, the Tron deck's gonna have time to set up. And potentially drop something like a Worm Coil engine would probably be the worst thing we could face. Alright, turn 2 Grove, so no turn 3 Tron at least. There's a Sylvan Scrying. Well, the fact that they're not going to have Tron on 3 means we might be able to get there if we get lucky these next turns. Pick up another Gravecrawler. So we can looting, discarding Gravecrawler and then cast it out of the graveyard. And then hope to draw into a Vengevine we can discard here. Instead we find Bridge, so Bridge definitely wants to go, and then we can discard Gravecrawler. So now do we get back Gravecrawler, or do we play Supplier? My guess is Supplier has higher upside, since we could still hit a Vengevine. No Vengevine. So Hanger back for zero makes a zombie token with Bridge. And then next turn we can Bushwhacker, that's probably our play here. So we have given up on... Vengevine now. And drawing a land would let us play Gravecrawler before kicking Bushwhacker. Alright, let's see if that's enough. Chromatic Sphere. Sacrifice for green and Ancient Stirrings. And then if our opponent's finisher is a worm coil engine, we could be in trouble unless we can find a sacrifice outlet to prevent the life gain. And an Ugin would also be really bad. Karn we can probably beat. Worldbreaker might be beatable as well. Alright, I think we're just bushwhacking here. And we're going to be one point short of lethal. 
but uh, still good enough, alright? So apparently just making a bunch of 1-1s and then playing a kick bushwhacker was good enough here against the turn 4 Tron. So against Tron, what are they going to bring in as far as Graveyard here is concerned? Usually just Relic of Progenitus, they might have Surgical Extraction. Uh, opponents on the red-green version, I don't think that changes much. The black-green version more likely to have a Leyline, I think. So what do we bring in? Ingature seems fine. Can kill an early map or potential Relic. And then my guess is Thoughtseize is reasonable. Can snipe a payoff card out of their hand. Don't want to go too deep in the sideboard here. Could also consider a Ravelry, but it starts maybe becoming a little bit too much. And we would be diluting our deck too much, I think. And it's not like Artifact Destruction is all that amazing against Tron. So two more cards we need to take out. I guess maybe two Thought Seas is enough. So we just have to cut one card, which is going to be a Hanger Back Walker. Just guessing here. So how about this one? We don't actually have red mana to cast our looting. We can cast Thought Seas and Gravecrawler. And then if we do find red mana for looting, we can discard Bridge and make two zombies with Ballistas. This hand's probably on the low end of keepable hands, but I think this might still be keepable. And of course, ideally, we find a red source, so we can get this bridge in the graveyard as soon as possible. Opponent with Ancient Stirrings on turn 1 finds a Relic of Progenitus, which we're gonna try and thought seize here. Even have the Ingature for it, but no red mana, so let's thought seize our opponent. And their hand is Relic, Ancient Stirrings. Ulamog, and they've got two Tron pieces. So yeah, we'll be taking the Relic and hopefully Stirrings doesn't find them. The final Tron piece. So there's Stirrings. Finds a Karn instead. Alright. And mind the play. And a Stitcher Supplier, which is probably the play here over Gravecrawler, since if we mill over Vengevine we can get it back this turn. And instead just a Neonate and two lands. Not quite. Alright, well, we're a red source away from doing something powerful. And our opponent is one Tron piece away from doing something powerful. Oblivion Stone to play. So that's something we could potentially blow up with uh, Ingature as well. Not our Supplier instead. I think we still go for it over Gravecrawler. And alright, there's Vengevine. So now we can play Ballista for zero and get back Vengevine and get in for five. So we have something going now. Might not be fast enough if our opponent finds their final Tron piece in time. But we do have a little bit of interaction now with the Ingature if we can find red mana. And yep, there's a power plant. So our opponent can cast Karn this turn. Karn's going to go after our land. And that does give us the opportunity to kill Karn here, which we probably have to do. And hit our opponent for two. But now they can sack the Oblivion Stone, get rid of our board. Can still get back into it if we find a red source here. But it looks like instead they found another Tron piece, and now Ulamog is probably going to be game over. Alright, we tried. Just needed to find that red source. Couldn't get it, so a little bit punished for the basic swamp here. And Neonate to draw. Yeah, I don't think we're winning from this position, but we might as well give it one more turn here. Supplier can chump Ulamog. But Ulamog just milling us for 20. Two turns in a row is gonna end up being the nail in the coffin. We will chump while we still can. And of course, now that the Supplier milled us, one attack from Ulamog is going to mill us out, and there's no way we can deal 13 here. So we won't show them any extra cards. Alright, so if we had found our Red Search, we probably would have been able to close out the game in time. Do we reconsider anything? Could reconsider whether we want Ravelry. But again, I think we probably won't need it. And we can just rely on Ingature or being faster than the opponent. But especially now that we're on the play, we want to try and be more proactive, try and get stuff into play before Relic happens. So maybe that means we want an extra hanger back. Maybe we can cut a Gargadon. Try something like this. Would like to be on the play. And how about this hand? This hand doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. We've got Neonate. 
but nothing fancy to discard. So I don't think this is gonna do it. It's an okay beatdown draw if they did have the Graveyard Hate, but I think we can do better. And is this better? Not really, but double looting can potentially find us some goodies, so I don't think we can go to 5. And Verdant can go on the bottom. And we can fetch for Blood Crypt, or we can just cast a looting on turn 1 off a mountain, which might be fine here given all the red cards we have in hand anyway. Find Visras here, and a land. Are we just giving up on any graveyard interactions and just going on a beatdown plan? Don't think that's gonna cut it. So my guess is we have to keep the looting and just try to get lucky next turn with what we loot into. The Visra Seer is not doing a whole lot for us here. Neither is the Bushwhacker to be honest. But the Bushwhacker can be an important finisher. So my guess is we discard the Seer. So not what we were hoping for. We were hoping for a Bridge or a Vengevine here to run Power Plant into Relic. Alright, so we've got one turn to make something happen. And the Bushwhacker is not it. So we can looting and hope to draw into Vengevine plus Hangerback or Walking Ballista, exactly. Or we can just go Neonate plus Bushwhacker here and call it a day. I think we looting. Try to spike instead just two lands. Probably just ditching both lands. Alright, so our hopes and dreams of getting back a Vengevine are gone. So now we're just playing a Neonate and then casting a bunch of Bushwhackers and hoping they somehow kept a hand that doesn't do anything. So you can kind of see the highs and the lows with the Bridgevine deck here. Sometimes you're attacking for a whole bunch on turn one, sometimes you don't get there. And yeah, now that our opponent has Relic activation up, discarding Vengevine with Neonates, not gonna do what we want to. But even if we had found Vengevine last turn, we wouldn't have been able to get it back since we didn't have a zero mana enabler. Opponent's gonna activate Relic. Alright, so we're getting in for four. Opponent does not sacrifice Relic quite yet. Expedition map finds Tower. And they're gonna pass it back with uh, Tower and Relic up. Let's attack for two. A relic gets rid of a land, and our opponent's happy to untap. And there's Tron enabled in two, maybe a Thraktusk? Nope, a Wormcoil Engine. So yeah, that's the worst case scenario here, don't think we're beating that anytime soon. Alright, so this game's pretty much over. Do get a zombie from our bridge, get to draw with Neonate, pick up Hangar back, stitch your supplier to draw. See what we get. Gravecrawler and looting. No black mana to cast our Gravecrawler here. So we're just saying go. And there's Karn, which can start going after our lands as well. Or can start taking up. Decides to go after Blood Crypt. I'll give it one more turn here, but I don't think we have any realistic outs. Wormcoil stays on defense to protect Karn, and Stitcher Supplier is not going to do it here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, this hand seems great. Looting on turn 1, discarding Bridge and Vengevine, turn 2, double Neonate, trigger Bridge twice, get Vengevine back, have a good time. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1, Sacred Foundry, could be Burn, and we see a Rift Ball suspended. Alright, so this is all about being as fast as possible and maybe try not to take too much damage from our own lands. So I think we can probably 4-2 fetch a basic mountain, given that double Neonate is in our future anyway. And we could even go for the turn 1 Vengevine here. If we go Neonate, discard Vengevine, play Hangar back for 0. But my guess is looting, discarding Bridge and Vengevine, and then turn 2. Go for that play, it's gonna be more explosive. And of course we can still make a 2-2 zombie here after the looting by playing hangar back for zero since we have the two creatures to enable Vengevine next turn anyway. And the burn deck starting out without any turn one creatures is going to be significantly weaker than a burn deck that starts out with a turn one goblin guide or swiss spear. 
Not that the creatures are going to be able to attack for very much longer, but the burn deck usually wants to start with a turn one creature. All right, so we can ditch Vengevine and Bridge. And then make a 2 to zombie. And say go. So we got our zombie token. Let's see where the Rift Bolt goes. Goes to our face, so we're down to 16. Eidolon could potentially hurt a little bit since we need to play double Neonate next turn. Another reason to run out uh, Hanger back last turn as opposed to wait a turn. Instead it's going to be a Grim Lava Mancer. And a Lava Spike. Alright. Pick up a Verdant. I think we just take two off the stomping ground here. And then we can always fetch Basic Swamp if we need access to black mana. Suppose we probably could have sacked a Neonate first in case we drew into something better. So let's discard, Verdant, draw a card, make a zombie, and our draw step wasn't really going to change our play. So now we get to get back Vengevine, and we might as well sack the Neonate right now for a zombie, but we'll see here. We'll attack with Vengevine or zombie token if our opponent blocks, then we might want to make an extra zombie token before the bridge leaves our graveyard. So another bad turn too. Attacking for 6. And our opponent's just gonna take it, so we can uh, wait on the neonate activation, I think. Might be useful as a chum blocker in case of a top decked goblin guide. And there's a lava spike, so we're down to 8. And end of turn, I think we will sacrifice a neonate, discarding probably the verdant. But it probably doesn't matter given that we already have basic mountain in play. So we'll draw a card, pick up a bushwhacker, that's a good one. It's gonna help us close out this game. So our opponent's going to be forced to block with a Lava Mancer and maybe shoot down a zombie. I don't think we want to take any damage off our lands here. I think just kicking the Bushwhacker is probably safe. We could play the Neonate before kicking the Bushwhacker to force our opponent to shoot down a zombie as opposed to deal 2 damage to us. But the 2 damage we take from Blood Crypt ends up being more or less the same. And yeah, our opponent does put us to 6. And we'll play a Tam Blood Crypt. So we could be dead to a mix of Lining Bolts and Lava Spikes here. And now any 2 burn spells will do it, but our opponent doesn't have it. Alright, sweet, that was a close one. So the burn deck might side in a few copies of Rest in Peace, but I don't think we need to be too worried about that, since we can get our value before it comes into play, hopefully. Don't think we need to bring in much for this matchup. We could consider Lightning Axe, get rid of a, an early creature, buy ourselves a bit of time. But I think all in all, it's just about speed and keeping the main deck as is is gonna make for the fastest version. All right, so how about this one? Don't have any Venge Vines nor any Bridges. Do have two Lootings, but if we don't find one of our payoff cards right away, this hand doesn't really do much. Besides getting back a Bloodcast, feels too risky and too slow to me, so we'll go to 6. This one's not very good either, we're just playing a Gravecrawler. And then we have Ballista and Hanger back as 2 drops, but do we want to go to 5 is the question. We do get to cast Gravecrawler on 1, and then we can fetch a basic to play one of these on 2. And our opponent also mulligans, so this can definitely go to the bottom. So what are we hoping to draw? Stitcher Supplier into Venge Vines, I guess. Let's see if they have the turn one guide this time. They do. Yep, that's going to be painful. So we're down to 18, but a Stitcher Supplier revealed off the top. That's what we were hoping for. So we're definitely playing that on turn one here. And then hoping for the best. Venge Vines high up on our list, but uh, Bridge would also be decent here with all the Ballistas. And walkers and double Vengevine, wow. Okay then. Well, gotta dream big. So, yeah, sometimes you get lucky. And get two Vengevines on turn one. After having mulliganed and kept a somewhat sketchy hand. So those are getting in there. And I think keeping the walker as opposed to the ballista makes sense. Since the extra chum blocker could be useful. And you can kind of see how a rest in peace now would not be too effective. Bone's not even attacking with the goblin guide. 
So we don't want to run out any creatures pre-combat so we can still get back Vengevine's second main. And I think we're still keeping back the supplier here, even though there's a chance they wouldn't block it with a guide. And our opponent's just chomping with a guide instead. And do they have a helix? Nope, it's going to be a magma jet of all burn spells to take down the Vengevine. And not a card you see very often in burn decks these days. So our opponent takes 4 down to 7. And then we can still play Gravecrawler. So our opponent is facing lethal. Let's see what they do about it. And there's Relic of Progenitus, a little bit too late here. And our opponent's gonna pack it in. Awesome, so I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.